Welcome to our continuing series on Ignatian Wisdom. My name is Kevin Leidick and I'm one of the pastoral ministers here at El Retiro. And this is a second of a four-part series on Ignatian decision-making, the elements of Ignatian decision-making. In the first part, we took a look at consolation and desolation and what those terms mean. In this session, I to simply describe how God communicates with us. Because part of decision-making is being aware of how God is leading us, guiding us, always to deeper faith, hope, and love, always deeper consolation. How does God communicate with us? Let me describe three stories from my experience. A number of years ago, I moved to another, a new city and after I was there for a year or two, uh, I received sad news one day that a, a friend of mine died in my previous home city. And I was very saddened by that, uh, very saddened by his loss and his family. But secondarily, a feeling came over me, I want to be there. I want to be there for his funeral. So I cleared my calendar and drove down from one part of the state to the other part of the state, be present for his wake service on Friday evening and his funeral mass on Saturday. My second story, I had completed my Jesuit training uh, in England, Ireland for a year, and I was assigned to go back to one of the schools where I had previously taught, but this time not to teach full time, but to work in development. Now I did teach part time, but I was working primarily in the president's office to assist the president in, in the responsibilities that the president did. And I was given all these different tasks like auction catalogs, uh, workers' comp, uh, insurance, uh, health benefits, all these different aspects of, of running a school that I knew nothing about. I learned quite a bit. I was doing this for two years. Uh, I, you know, did quite well um, in terms of my learning curve. But I noticed that during that first year, whenever I was alone behind a desk in this large office, working alone on property tax papers or insurance, that a wave of desolation would come over me. It would come, it would go. It never interfered with my work or interfere my relationships, but always happened when I was alone. I interpret that as God communicating to me to go back into full-time ministry, full-time teaching. Somebody else can do the, the property taxes, the auction catalogs, etc. My second story. My third story is that a few years later, I returned to that particular school after being away, and this time to teach full-time. And uh, my previous times at that school, I did a variety of co-curricular activities. I was a yearbook moderator for a while. I was a, uh, in charge of cheerleaders for a bit. I did a variety of other things. And people expected me, besides teaching full-time, to do all these different activities. Well, the needs of the school had changed. And I couldn't do all of them. And so I made a decision I'm only going to get involved with those activities that pertain to the spiritual mission of the school. Now those are three decisions that I made. Examples of three different ways which God communicates with us. All three of them were grace experiences for us. And to me, they illustrate what Ignatius from his experience uh, teaches us of how God communicates in various ways. The first way is through immediate clarity, as St. Paul being knocked down to the ground, or St. Matthew being pointed to and saying, follow me. There's immediate clarity to that. Much like when my friend died in Los Angeles, and my initial reaction of sadness was accompanied by, I want to be there. Immediate clarity, that was the most loving thing for me to do. The second way that God can communicate with us is through the movements of the heart through the ups and downs of our desires and feelings. And I believe that, you know, the conversion story of Ignatius, when he's reading the books, um, coincides with that experience. Or the conversion of Dorothy Day, when she saw people 
going into a Catholic church early in the morning when she was an unbeliever, and she followed them in, and her heart was moved. I want to possess what they possess. Or when I was behind the desk working development, and I you know, had a way with desolation, uh, would come and go. Again, that's a, an experience of being moved by my heart to go back into full-time ministry. So God can communicate with us, not just through immediate clarity, but also through the movements of our hearts. God can also move us through our reason, uh, what is most reasonable. The conversion stories of St. Augustine and Thomas Merton uh, certainly to me clearly illustrate that. Or when I returned to that school where I had taught previously and I couldn't do all the various activities I've done before or what was expected of me, but I made a decision I'll only pertain, I'll only get involved with those activities that pertain to the spiritual mission of the school. Again, acting on what is most reasonable, what's going to be helpful to most people. Those three ways are what Ignatius describes in the heart of the spiritual exercises of how God moves us. God can move us through immediate clarity, through the movements of the heart, and also through our reason. But always the language of God is, is a language of love loving feelings, loving thoughts, loving desires. And that's at one of the hearts, the heart of Ignatian decision-making, is being attentive to how God communicates to us in different ways. Thank you very much.